Good morning, everybody. You know what we do here. Every Tuesday, we do channel audits for you to help you grow your channel. But what if it's not Tuesday at 11 o'clock? How do you audit your channel? That's what we're going to look at right now. And then we're going to do a classic thing and audit your channel. Let's do this. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. As I said, everyone, welcome back to VidIQ once again. My name is Rob. If this is your first time here on this live stream, we are the YouTube channel and tool that aims to help you get more views in less time. And as always, I'm joined by my esteemed, order, honoured, slightly frazzled guest uh, this week, Jeremy Vest, who's preparing for a big conference next week, but he's taking time out of his very busy schedule to ensure that he gives you the expert guidance that you all know and love. Welcome, Jeremy, once again to vidIQ. How are you doing this week? Doing great. Awesome. Glad to hear it. And uh, what we're going to talk about today, both uh, you and I, are some channel audit suggestions for you as video creators if you do not have the um, luxury of getting the uh, audits that we give you uh, today. Uh, and we're going to jump straight into it, I think, Jeremy, if you're ready. What we're looking at uh, for everybody here is uh, six ways to audit your channel's health uh, as you go through your creator journey. And we're going to uh, uh, do a tag team here. I'm going to go first, and then uh, Jeremy's going to offer some suggestions. Uh, so what we're looking at basically is taking a step back, just uh, getting away from video creating and actually looking at your channel and saying, what can I improve? And the first uh, suggestion I have here is just for an hour or so, when you finish creating your uh, latest uh, masterpiece is to just look at your channel and take a step back and think, does this look like a welcoming place and do my audience understand the content that I create here? And I'll put two examples on screen here. On, on the left-hand side, you can see vidIQ, and we've worked very hard to really establish our value proposition, which is essentially helping you as video creators understand YouTube, apply it to your own channel, and get more views. And I'm sure you can see both from the channel banner and the thumbnails here uh, that are very strong and consistent about what we're doing here with certainly me on a lot of the thumbnails and uh, these icons which give you indications of uh, the different topics that we're talking about. And I just wanted to contrast that with a channel here that I've taken randomly from vidIQ and Apple Tech Stock as a posted a comment here and this is not a criticism of your channel per se it's just uh, look at the two channels side by side and see which one seems to have a more defined strategies and values it's awesome that you're using the thumbnails here and uh, your face appears in some of the thumbnails and you have text but then if you look a little closer uh, are you focusing on the right topics are you jumping topics is the text legible and just as an idea of the whole YouTube house that you want to build and the foundations is your brand strong enough and maybe some video creators hate hate the word brand you could put it down as your personality or your youtube home and i think every month or so that's probably something that you want to do step back take a look at your channel and straight away i'm looking at my channel and one thing that we desperately want to improve at some point is the channel banner we think that the thumbnails have been gone up to a level 11 but our channel banner is still maybe a six or seven out of ten so Looking at our own audit, that's what we need to improve next. On to point two. And again, this is something that is very simple to forget. It is just stepping back and looking at what videos are performing best on your channel, going back to basics. And this is something that you can very easily do by going to real-time analytics and setting of a sort order by estimated views in the last 60 minutes or the last 48 hours, which videos continue to perform well on your channel days, weeks, months after these they've been published. And this is your evergreen content. And we've got three videos now which are really starting to chug along at a very consistent uh, amount of views, like how to start your gaming channel, 3,000 views every 48 hours, hashtags, 1,700 views, and uh, how to get 4,000 hours of watch time. These three videos that are on slightly different topics. These are our best performing videos on the channel organically. Is there anything we could do to double down on them? And we have been doing that. We've been doing more uh, channel um, hashtag, sorry, YouTube hashtag videos, and we've been doing more videos on Fortnite. I'm not sure if you've noticed that. Uh, so we've been trying to focus on where we are best at and how we can capitalize on that. So 
That would be the, the second suggestion from us for, for auditing your channel. Take a look at what's performing well over a long period of time and doubling down if you can. And here on the second screen here, we have a channel audit tool that can actually tell you where your best performing videos are. And you can see those uh, similar videos appearing again, the, the channel, uh, how to start a gaming channel and YouTube hashtags and 4,000 hours of watch time. Those videos are all performing well. And this is a free portion of a channel audit, uh, which Jeremy is going to touch on as well when he it looks at his improvements to audit your channel. So going back to basics, knowing what's your best content and doubling down on it. And finally from me, where do your video, going at a very granular level, just l review your videos and see when do people either switch on or when do they watch and enjoy your content? And this is very easy to do again. Go to your audience retention, click on a single video, and then go to relative audience retention, and then you can see how your average view duration compares against the rest of YouTube. And we can see here there's some peaks where the viewers are enjoying our content more than average, and then there are dips. And you can let the video play at this time and see, okay, after two minutes 20, for some reason, the, the average view duration started to decline. Why is that? And it may be because we delivered the value of the content there and it, the rest of the content is not valuable to the viewers or there was some other reason. Maybe there was a bit of video that was too long and people were getting bored. So that would be my final suggestion there. Audience retention, go really deep, granular, really scrutinize your videos and say, okay, this bit didn't work on this video. I'm going to take it out of the next video, but keep in the good bits and uh, see how we can improve. So those are my three top audit tips. If you're not able to get a free audit here today, Jeremy, it's over to you. Uh, we're looking at for you views to engagement. How can people audit their channel to improve this aspect of their content? So Getting really nerdy here, that's what I do. Um, I like to take my total views for a certain amount of time. I think this was like one month or something, two or three months. And I like to include the likes, dislikes, comments, and shares, and then divide that by the total views. So in this case, I have a 2.47% views to total engagement in my channel. Mm -hmm. So... You know, you have 100 views, 2.47 people engage with those views. If you have sub 1% uh, views to engagement, odds are you're either buying traffic or in general people aren't liking, sharing, or commenting on your, on your stuff. Yeah. And if you go to the next slide. Views to subs on this one. Yeah, so I do the same thing for views to subscribers. So you can see on my little channel, I have 106,000 views, 3,735 subscribers today. So I have a sub to view ratio of 3.4%. Again, if it's under 1%, it's really probably underperforming or you're advertising um, or you're purchasing views. So, you know, I've seen as high as 5 or 10%, as low as almost nothing. Um, but if your views to subs are over one or 2%, you're doing pretty well. Another thing, because I'm a nerd, I took my top 10 competitors and did this because you can do the, you can do this for any channel, right? Yep. So I, I wanted to see what my views to subscriber ratios were compared to everyone else's. And what I determined is I don't have a lot of views, but my subscriber to view ratio is actually fairly high for my industry. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's high is because I just talk about thumbnails and not, no one else really does that so, right now. So I have a niche and people are finding value in that niche. So by showing views to subs and views to engagement, you can really get a sense of how people are interacting with your content yeah. from a high level yeah, it's, it's almost like the analytics are telling the story of your channel there, which is uh, fascinating stuff. And Absolutely. I, I think, I believe now, Jeremy, we've got a, a bit of a, a drum roll moment here. We're, we're teasing something here, which I hope you guys will see. I, that looks familiar, but maybe that metric doesn't look familiar. So what are we looking at here, Jeremy? So I can't tell you what we're <laughs> looking at, but like Rob was talking about earlier, showing, you know, in our um, in our tool... 
our uh, channel audit tool, he was showing the best performing content based on watch time and subscribers gained and a lot of other things like that. Um, you can also see this based on the content performing the worst. So you can do this in analytics or in the near future, you will you can do this with our tool. So by understanding what content's doing the worst and what content's doing the best, you should be able to, to theoretically remove the content that's not performing very well based on views per hour, engagement, views, and then uh, do a lot more of the content that's doing well. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, there we are, folks. An exclusive reveal for the vidIQ community here that we, we have something in the works for Channel Audit. We're calling it V2, and we are on the cusp of uh, unleashing this onto uh, YouTube, and we're really excited to show you. Uh, but at the moment, these are just teasers, but we're very soon going to have that out for you, and we can't wait to share it with you there. Uh, so those are some of the uh, big suggestions we have for auditing your channel uh, if you're not lucky enough to receive a channel audit, which we're doing right now. So, folks, so this is over into the sort of a live stream portion now where we're going to start interacting with you. So we want to do some shout outs here to people who are watching on the live stream. And if you are watching now, do tell us where you are in the world and what time it is. We'd like to know how committed you are uh, to getting a channel audit. So hello to people such as the British Mewtwo, uh, Dragon, Carp, Peddling with Paul, a regular visitor here to the live stream. Hi, Shiva, hello to you too. The Cruzy Way Jays, Blake Eddington Airborne, some new names here. It's EC3 Pegasus Angel Gaming Gameplay. Uh, Jeremy, who else have we got here on the live stream today? All right, we have the Doberman Guy. Thank you for being our moderator. Of you're course. Amazing. Hello, Doberman Guy. Awesome to see you as always. And Extra Sessions Meter as well, our second moderator if you're here as well. Who else, Jeremy? We have Future Now, Carp, Derek. Always Pegasus, Angel. Thanks for uh, being a big part of what we do. Sweet. And now we're just getting some people telling us where they're coming from uh, here today. So Free Your Mind Art is in Burnley. Uh, Colin plays in California. Anton there in Bulgaria. Wow, that's uh, going uh, well over to the uh, Eastern Europe. I'm sure it must be quite late now, probably 9, 10 o'clock in the evening. Uh, Fun with EG Chicago, one eleven there. So enjoying your lunchtime here, a bit of a light... Um, uh, channel auditing and we've also got uh, ATK Travis from uh, Finland as well. Who else have we got there, Jeremy? I'm just going to start uh, uh, sharing your screen here. So if you just want to do some Spicy more shout Mafia from Guinea. That's kind of cool. New Jersey's in the house. Florida, Virginia, Texas, Boston, Morocco, Egypt, Canada, Alaska, wow. Netherlands, Iran. This is pretty awesome. So it's just awesome to know that we've got like a global audience here to see what yeah. we're going to do right now. Seamless transitions there from uh, the uh, presentation now to some uh, screen sharing. So Jeremy, just to confirm you can see this, the screen that we're Absolutely. Doing. Awesome. We are going to shoot ready, right into it here. So if you are Paul C, Zephyr, Chips Creep, Dragon, the Dino Brothers, Jamie Plays, we've got you lined up uh, for some... Uh, uh, some channel audits uh, and we're going to have more as well and just one more thing to say uh, if you do want your channel auditing we've now put a link in the live stream description uh, so fill out the form there it just me allows us to line up lots of channels to audit and then if you're missed this week then we can prioritize you for next week as well so uh, we're trying this new system hopefully it works do let us know uh, in the comments below but anyway we're going to start looking at our first channel here which is Paul C learn to detect Master your detector. And it looks to me as if this is some sort of uh, metal detector uh, channel, which I always love these sort of channels because it really does show you that there is room for any sort of content on YouTube. And this channel with two and a half uh, thousand subscribers uh, with what looks to be a fairly healthy channel. And uh, any any initial thoughts here, Jeremy, as I just turn on my magnifying glass so we can have a look at a bit more detail in these thumbnails here. As we yeah, look absolutely. Them. You know, the, the first thing on just the header itself is it's just really busy. Yes. I would love to just see a really cool picture of you metal detecting with master your, master your metal detector or something like that or learn to master your metal detector. A lot smaller fonts there. Yeah. Um, but one really cool image. 
just the, you know, your tagline and maybe new videos every Wednesday or something. Um, but it's just way too busy right now would be my first suggestion. And then the same thing for the thumbnails. I just think you have too much text mm -hmm. and it's just too busy. I would like to see like super gold find, I think is a near perfect thumbnail. Um, I think that one's really good. A good day is pretty good. You may want to experiment with colors, uh, background colors, um, less text, you know, three, four words tops, get a little more color in the background. And, uh, yeah, that's super gold find. That's awesome. Yeah. That's I think great... what's good about that is, is it has a bit, it, it focuses on one particular thing that you find right. like the highlight of the video. And so we're, there's, there's some sort of payoff there, but no, but there's going to be a story about how, how this person found it. So I think you're absolutely right there. And I think that's reflected as well in the view counts. Like this one has one and a half thousand views and the rest in the hundreds. So it seems to be one of the more popular ones as well. So certainly policy, I think Jeremy's fantastic suggestion there of focusing on less text and more on the discovery of whatever you find in the videos uh, would be good there. Anything else, Jeremy, that you could possibly... I, I, what I would say as well is that I think there is some consistency here. Like, what, if you put these thumbnails in a collection of others, you'd definitely be able to pick out Paul C's, like, branding and colour scheme and, and fonts to a certain extent. But I, as you say, they just need to be refined a little more. Yeah, and, and use the same font every time. Yeah. That's one thing, um, you know... When someone sees your thumbnail, guys, you should they should be able to know it's you. So you should have enough consistency with color and fonts, topography and everything to yeah. where they know it's your thumbnail. Do me a favor and type yep. in search metal detector. Certainly. Or metal detecting, metal detector finds. So Paul, you may want to look at metal detecting finds as the first phrase you use in every video. Yeah. Interesting that metal detecting finds dude perfect is one of the search terms as well. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know, I quite know how that fits in, but yeah, metal detecting um, discoveries. And so, yes, yeah, maybe some playing around with the metal detector keyword phrase and then including that on your title. Did I tell you my random run in with dude perfect this week? <laughs> Go for it. I was skate. True story. I was skateboarding. I, I live in North Texas and Dallas, and uh, a couple of days ago, and Dude Perfect just shows up to the skate park and they're doing this uh, challenge. I can't say what it is yet, and um, I got to meet them all. Really cool, cool guys. They only have thirty three million subs, so they're not very big. Yeah, do they need a channel audit at this point? Or I right, probably yeah. need to teach them how to do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, that, back to the uh, audit. Same policy. A uh, couple of uh, bits and pieces of advice there, and I just will want to say one thing as well. I've seen your channel before, and I was watching it, and you have this very good way of having around about. 10 to 20 seconds of, oh, what's he going to find this time as he digs up? And then, like, it's a, it's a pound coin or it's a it's an old bit of metal. And I think that has very good watchability. You don't um, linger too long on the, on the discovery. It's always, like, you're feeding that, the pattern interrupt of what's he going to find next, what's he going to find next. So uh, I think the content is really weirdly fascinating uh, uh, for a metal detector channel. But good luck uh, in your future endeavors. The next channel we are going to look at here is Zephyr, a channel with 2,100 subscribers. And what I found instantly fascinating about this channel is that every title seems to begin with should you buy. And then I look at the view counts, which are in the, the thousands for a 2,000 sub channel. And it feels as if this channel has capitalized on a particular search term for a particular sort of game which is a little unusual uh, as i look at it jeremy like i think the game is mobile legends but that's very rarely the the key the beginning tight the beginning keyword in the title but should you buy seems to be doing tremendously well for this channel so is there any thoughts you could add to this unique strategy i might might describe it as well, you know, looking at our, we at the green little number, the 100%, 98%. Yeah. This tells me that the like to dislike ratio is very high. So honestly, I would, um, at first, like, should you buy, I would be really afraid to rank for that. But you're obviously getting the right people to see your content because yeah. you're 
use to dis use uh, dislikes ratio is very high. Um, so obviously it's working uh, quite well. Um, one thing I would I would challenge is should you buy is probably completely wrong because if you think about it, I'm probably typing in should I buy. Interesting. Um, you see what I mean? So, yeah. and, and we could search that and figure it out, the exact phrase. But this does show the power of consistency. Yeah. You know, we always preach consistency. If you have a consistent pattern, you're a lot more likely to rank for those bigger category terms. So I just did the search for should you buy Mobile Legend and Zephyr dominating that particular search term. It doesn't look as if it has a high volume, but... He... Type in should I. Let's do that. So yeah, it does change completely. Uh, well, he still uh, has a... Um, let's see there. Still There's ranking the relatively well there, so... Certainly a lot of videos appearing there, and because of the consistency of the thumbnails, I can certainly pick out Zephyr's vi um, video straight away there. But the, the, the point is, in my opinion, I would have went completely different with this philosophy, even though you're doing a good job. I would have started with the phrase mobile legend and maybe mobile, mobile legend game or mobile legend gaming, and then um, should I buy blank? And the reason for that is obviously if you just type in mobile legend, you're going to see the search intents 10 times bigger than the should I buy or should you buy. Okay. Uh, so we, I think we're going to start a little bit of a, a um, how are we going to call this? Not an argument, a bit of a, a vidIQ discussion summit here. My, my potential argument would be here that because the channel is so small, uh, they are trying to not uh, – rank for such a such a high highly searched term mobile legend it's going really specific and niche within that um within that genre is there not an, an argument for that for that absolutely and, and my argument back would be you're probably in my opinion based on experience would be that they would probably rank higher for a longer term tell tell words okay starting with mobile now they're not going to rank for mobile legend yeah because you know the channel compared to some of the bigger channels ranking for mobile legend they're probably not going to rank super well but my argument back to that would be would they rank better for long tail mobile legend terms if they started with mobile legend okay so perhaps there's effort there is some experimentation that you want to try just uh, tweaking the titles and seeing if it does have a have a positive or negative impact on your channel uh, any any thoughts going beyond the uh, the titles and any thoughts about the thumbnails anything we can improve there uh, i like the thumbnails i think yeah. they're a little dark maybe yeah. the image uh, the face is a little larger i do yeah. like the text yeah okay so there you are, Zephyr. You, you've caused a little bit of conflict there in the, in the uh, vidIQ universe. But uh, we channel icon <laughs> make it different. We we You're not Squidward. Sorry, he's not Squidward, so he has to change his channel icon. Okay. All right. So some insider knowledge. I had no idea what I was about there. Um, uh, it's, it's a SpongeBob thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> Yeah, it's not my generation, Jeremy. <laughs> but but there you are, Zephyr. I hope there's some useful tips there. I just would say as well, fantastic work. You seem to have a really engaged audience for the size of your channel. Uh, and just uh, keep it up with your content. A few tweaks there maybe you can make. Next channel we're going to look at is... Now, this is a translated channel, I think. I had to use Google Translate here, but it's Chips Creep. And if I just go to the About section to try and determine what this channel is about. It's creating content and snoop the gaming so it's probably some something lost in translation there and an entertainment channel with all sorts of content this channel has uh, 4,000 subscribers again i don't know if these translations will be entirely accurate but i think there are some things we can see here about maybe the consistency in the thumbnails going back to our channel audit uh, suggestions at the beginning taking a step back you look at these thumbnails do they really match together and does the content match together I'm not sure there. We see some things about Snapchat and then some games and Minecraft. Um, and some some videos have been getting a lot of views though. So I'm just noticing here, wow, some views with channels with uh, 
videos with 50,000 views, 2,000 views, and ones with 900 views. It's a very a scattergun here. What Maybe the audience's expectations are a little puzzling. Uh, Jeremy, what would you add to this? Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, it's great that you're playing around as a YouTuber and you have all, some videos with a lot of views. You yeah. Subs. You're doing a good job. If you want to do better, you're going to focus on mm -hmm. one thing. You're going to make your thumbnails about 30% more awesome. And, um, you're, you know, you're just going to do Minecraft or you're just going to do this or that. You're not going to do everything. That would be my biggest suggestion. Unless you want to become a vlog and, you know, make you yeah. center point of all of your conversations. Yeah. Uh, so chips creep there. I'd I'd say some early successes. Maybe look at as Jeremy says what what are the most successful videos there and make that your focus uh, for the short term. And I guess another thing might be to say is in uh, in your country in your language perhaps the YouTube universe hasn't matured yet and you have this opportunity to really capitalize and make yourself a an influencer in a particular topic. So decide what that is and, and jump on that. Next channel we are going to look at is Dragon Clan, a channel with 72 subscribers. Uh, you want to create a world of dance and authenticity for all of humanity. There's some uh, big, wide, globally sort of, how, how do I put this? You, want, you wanted to change the world with your content here. And if we look at the content itself... I'm looking at it and we can see some vlogs and then some maybe some music videos. Do those include dance? I think for me, what I would be thinking is if this is a dance channel, how can you represent that in your thumbnails uh, with maybe more action uh, in in what we see here? Uh, what do you think there, Jeremy, in terms of how the channel looks so far? Yeah, I, I think that fundamentally... Um, I like the thumbnails. I, I, I love the color overlay, kind of like the Instagram filter look. Yeah, these ones here, like in the middle row. Yeah, they look yeah. great. I would definitely keep on doing that. Um, with the text, I would make it bolder with less words. Um, and then my biggest suggestion to you is to do series. So, for example, with Gay Pride Weekend, you have part one, part two, and part three. I would do that all the time. So I would have a specific series and I would consistently put out that type of content. Um, and then, you know, one kind of word of warning is like, for example, life's what you make it. That's a great quote, but there's no search intent behind it. Mm. So you may want something like inspirational quotes. Yeah. Life's what you make it. Yeah. Awesome. Because people type in inspirational quotes. So uh, just going back to the um, this, this, the um, the series, uh, if, this, if this channel is saying that it wants to create a world of dance, how would they fit maybe a, a, a vlogs into, uh, what was it, the, the Gay Pride Weekend? Um, does, it, does the channel need to change focus here? Or that could be well, like think, a side project. There's probably, the there's probably terms people are searching for within the LGBT community yeah. or dance or gay pride or something like that. I think there's a theme, there's a fundamental theme that you could do keyword research on and figure out what people are searching for within, you know, that. And I would just start the, your series and your titles and tags and descriptions and playlists uh, with that overall big root keyword. Um, and then, you know, what you're doing, like going to a parade or inspirational quotes or whatever would be part of that bigger vid IQ. Vid uh, IQ. Vid IQ. Or, vid you know, com. I don't know if it's LGBT. I don't know what it would be, but you have to find what people are searching for within that genre. Yeah. Awesome. So we are now four channels down. And what we're going to do is just take a little bit of a break here because we're going to do our uh, question of the week. We like to mix things up a little bit here and we're going to take our question of the week. And we also want to know your thoughts on this question. So just while I uh, play around with the controls a little bit to get Jeremy back on full screen, which is going to take me one moment here. Uh, where is it? Why is it not working? Okay, well, let's bring Jeremy in uh, partially now. Uh, the question, Jeremy, we're, we're looking at first here is um, 
an interesting one here because uh, people, when they're uh, starting to grow their channel and they're starting to maybe earn a little bit of a uh, influence and reputation, even some income, one question that people often uh, want to know is about MCNs, multi-channel networks. And the question here was, uh, do you think a channel that's, uh, that has MCM, that's with an MCM, usually gets higher CPM, so clicks per... Uh, what's it? Clicks per... My memory's gone. It, essentially more... Cost, cost per thousand. Co, co, essentially uh, more revenue uh, than a channel that's on its own, so on YouTube AdSense, uh, can, uh, if the content is the same. So is there, is there any general suggestions we would ever give to a channel in terms of whether they should join an MCM or not? What's your experience there? So this is a very heated debate. Mm-hmm but I'm just gonna get real with you guys. If you join an MCN, their job is to make money off of you, period. There are some MCNs that are better than others. Um, I found it, it's been my experience that most N- MCNs only cater to the top 10, five to 10% of their creators. So people over a million subs get the royal red carpet and everyone yeah. else gets the boot. Yeah. That's what I found with most MCNs. Now, there are a few exceptions to the rule. There's a few like smaller players and a few awesome people out there. I know of a few companies out there that are just good people trying to do well for creators. But for the most part, if you're talking about a multi-billion dollar you know, company and you're, you, you have 100,000 subscribers or less, the odds of you even getting through to a human are next to impossible. And they're going to take a percentage of the money you're making. And if you don't have a big channel, you're not making a lot of money. So they're going to take a percentage of money basically that won't barely even cover your camera expenses. So I do not recommend MCNs for most people because, you know, you really have to understand what's in it for them. A lot of, a lot of MCNs, definitely preach oh we're gonna do this and this and this i would definitely get a lot of recommendations i would talk to people in the program and see exactly what they got out of it i would talk to people i would ask them i want to talk to someone with my level subscribers to see what their experience is yeah i think um you're absolutely right that when somebody asks a question of like how much money can i earn from an mcm you're asking entirely the wrong question and it's yeah. a much wider question of should I even join an MCN and what's what's in it both for me and the uh, the creator. Some suggestions I would uh, always preach is that do not accept the first MCM random email offer that you get um, when you're starting to grow. You usually start to get this between five and 10,000 subscribers. People will just check your business email on your channel and contact you and say, we really like your channel, even though we're not referencing your channel whatsoever. It's like a copy and paste job. And I was always challenge uh, the the MCM to talk about my channel in general. Like, hey, it's fantastic that you've, uh, you emailed me, but this looks like unsolicited email what's it what what do you like about my channel specifically and why do you think it fits your mcm so and that is the first sign of are they going to do the research are they going to put any effort into finding out who you really are or is it is is your channel just a tick on somebody's targets for the month to sign up as many channels as possible um so thanks for the question that was from alexander alexandru uh asking a question about mcm income but i think that the, the much quieter question is should you be joining an MCM at all? And it's it's, it's a much wider debate. And as Jeremy said there, um, really think about what's in it for the MCM. Why are they contacting you? And my suggestion is get them to do a lot of work in finding out about you before you even consider uh, them you joining their channel. Uh, any thoughts that are coming out from the, the chat here that we uh, can see? Uh, so Colin, yeah, go ahead, know, Jeremy. One thing I would say is... Um, Maybe they've negotiated higher CPMs than everyone else, but yeah. after they take their cut, odds are that it's not going to, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Um, also, just remember, guys, the best way to be poor on a YouTube, um, on a YouTuber's uh, career path is to worry about cost per clicks and worry about AdSense. 
the best way to not make money on YouTube is to focus on getting money from advertising. Mm. Um, what you really need to do is you need to focus on partnerships and, um, you know, working with companies and uh, maybe even developing a product or service that's needed in your niche and in your industry that is not serviced. Um, but the best way to stay YouTube poor is to worry about what AdSense is going to give you. I'm not saying it's a bad program. They give out millions and millions of, of dollars a month. I'm just saying it's the least likely way for you to make any substantial amount of money. Yep. Awesome. So that's a, a discussion there on uh, MCNs, and we're going to have one more question uh, during this live stream. But right now, we are going to go back to the channel audit. So again, where I have to uh, press a few buttons here, Jeremy. So if there's anything you can pick out from the chat while I'm, I'm pressing all my buttons, uh, do let us know, and I'll line them up. Any yeah, I just want to say hi to Cleveland Edwards. He used to work with you back in the day, like 2014. Thanks for stopping by here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, very cool. All right, we're back onto the uh, channels. Can you see my screen again, Jeremy? Yep. Oh, so, so seamless that I got it in there this time. Let's just press a <laughs> few more buttons to get rid of stuff on screen. Right, so we're now looking at the Dino Brothers. This channel has 65 subscribers. It looks like a trio of video creators here. Welcome to YouTube. I just want to say you, you look like you're uh, uh, young chaps looking to uh, fulfill your YouTube dream dreams. And this is awesome to see that you're obviously really enthusiastic about, uh, enthusiastic about this. Just looking at the thumbnails that you've got here, which are really strong and vibrant and powerful. Uh, your channel is about Lego, Pokemon, and games, and your consistency looks fairly strong here, posting, what, like 10 videos in the last month, which is awesome. Uh, what, what might we say here, Jeremy, about the thumbnails and, and the general look of the channel? All in all, I think you guys are doing really well. Yeah. You know, for, six, for a new channel, 65 subscribers, I love the icons, the, you know, the banner, everything's good. I, I think you um, you guys are doing very well. Primary color is always good yep. for kids. Uh, it's just how their brains work. You know, they like to see bright stuff. Um, one recommendation would to have less text mm -hmm. and more action. Yeah. So, for example, if I'm talking about a Pokemon trading card, I want to see the card 90% of the screen with the kid's face 10% of the screen. Yeah. I, I, so I was more saying, action, less text. Kids don't even read text most of the time. <laughs> you know? maybe, maybe this what's in the bag one is kind of a, one that's leading towards that idea. There's some sort of intrigue yeah. here, but maybe, as you say, the bag needs to be zoomed in more and maybe the, the person on the right or left with the, the shocked YouTube look or the mouth over the hand like, oh, what, what's going to be in here uh, is, a, is a good take, start. Taking that, take all the text away, yeah. make his face the whole screen, and then have some type of emoji with like a box or a question mark. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, it looks as if it's like uh, unboxings of uh, different uh, toys that we can see here. Might there be a suggestion to maybe target Lego or Pokemon or games? Or do you feel as if at the moment the channel just needs to find its, find its foundation and, and move from there? Yeah, definitely find what, what's working best. Um, I would say that if you are doing unboxing and surprise videos that you want to start lead off the the title with those terms, yep. um, like uh, unboxing Pokemon or whatever, um, you want to start off the main phrase keywords with what the video is about. Um, you're going to have the most success if you do one thing well. Yeah. Uh, one last thing I would say, Dino uh, Brothers, awesome job at doing a live stream. Like, you guys are trying everything on YouTube, and I still find live streams absolutely daunting. And to see you doing it uh, uh, as your channel grows is amazing. So fantastic work there. And uh, maybe you want to try some live unboxings and see how they go. So uh, the foundations of a very good channel there, uh, the Dino Brothers, uh, awesome work. Okay, next up, we're going to be looking at Jamie Plays, Colin Plays, Mr. KT, and Cinema Speaks. All of them channels lined up. And I just want to say, since we, suggest, since we um, pushed our 
form sign up we've now got 52 responses so we've got potentially 52 channels already in the list uh, ready to rock and roll for this and future live stream so uh, let's move on to the next one here let's get through as many as we can in the time that we have here this one is jamie plays a gaming channel 38 subscribers and this channel is producing a little less content here we can see that we've done maybe four or five videos in the last month what's the focus of the channel seems maybe a little of uh, roblox and minecraft so two distinct uh, games there thumbnails perhaps looking a little busy uh, there any any thoughts here generally yeah hope generally busy stuff going on here jeremy it's what i would say uh, yeah it's just a, you have a lot going on so kind of focus in on what you want to talk about the most you know most kids watch specific things yeah. like for example my nine-year-old daughter loves roblox and minecraft um you know playing all the various different games but typically she watches uh let's play and stories so you're gonna want to find the the thing you do with all of this so right now what's not in the title and tags and descriptions that i see is the specific thing you're doing uh with you know yeah but you have the noob challenge and the epic minecraft challenge and you're doing a lot of the challenge videos but you you may want to take a road less traveled on specifically minecraft like uh stories or you know there there's so many genres but i would pick one thing and do a series of videos on that one thing yeah like oh, let's plays or whatever they are awesome but uh jamie's plays i i sense that you're probably of a similar age of the dino brothers so again uh congratulations and well done on starting this youtube journey that you have here and uh good luck with uh your future endeavors there next we're gonna we're gonna move away from a gaming channel just want to do a different topic just to freshen things up and this is going to be cinema speak film reviews and recommendations a channel with 150 subscribers and already i'm seeing a quality of thumbnails and branding which suggests this channel is not going to be 150 subscribers for long we're looking at a channel here with awesome foundations just looking at it a bit more specifically um the 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 problem i always see with um t these new cinema channels is that there's so many channels that are doing a similar thing how do you and you're covering so many so you're moving from one video to the other constantly how do you define yourself and maybe that might be a question that i would be thinking about what's your particular focus but yeah jeremy I think this channel looks fantastic in terms of its presentation yeah, I love the banner. The you're you're a master ninja thumbnails. Keep it up. Yeah. Um, I got to meet and I was writing uh, in a video marketing magazine with the creators of Cinema Sense back in the day. Cinema Sense is one of the biggest channels in this genre. I don't know how many billion views they have now, but they're huge. And what they did really well is they basically if you type in everything wrong with yes every movie in the world uh, yeah just type in everything wrong with and then see what comes up yeah so they're number eight million subs oh my gosh yeah. ridiculous but so what they did is they found a specific thing they did with movie trailers and they point out everything wrong with the movie yeah brilliant right yeah so my challenge to you cinema speaks is you're obviously intelligent you got a phenomenal banner you got phenomenal thumbnails how are you going to be different than everyone else how are you going to be the purple cow that stands out what is your thing that you do that no one else does um studying cinema sense and movie trailers and all the other channels out there come up with your own spice and flavor and you will win yeah and, I, and this could be something cinema speak that you're already doing in your videos you already have a, a unique viewpoint uh awesome alternative view but it just needs to be brought out into the open before a person clicks on the on the video yeah uh, so. in, in the tags titles yeah. description playlist yeah. it needs to be brought out everywhere yeah so i i think absolutely jeremy and the, again, just again looking at the thumbnails, they are 
awesome and your channel deserves more attention is how are you going to create a, a different perspective from all the other the film channels. But uh, congratulations on what you've done so far. And well, you've been going for three months, so you're starting to uh, get into that YouTube journey, the hustle and the grind. And I think you now, you have many of the foundations in, the, in place and it's just trying to find that unique selling point of your channel in a crowded market. So awesome stuff there, Cinema Speaks. And yeah, just going back to what I was saying about uh, just stepping back and looking at your channel uh, and your audit, this, when a viewer first looks at your channel, that's what they're doing. They're in. They're they're looking at it from a distance, and you can see immediately what this channel's about, and it's brilliant stuff. Yeah. So it's, I would say this is like a template channel for other video creators to look at. Next channel we are going to look at is Mr. KT, the official channel here of Mr. KT, with Mr. KT Life in Good Like or Life Happiness. New videos every week. 120 subscribers. We can see, I think, Jeremy, if I'm not mistaken, is this Dragon Ball Z uh, animation at the top here? Am I right there? Again, I'm just not down with the kids or anybody else in terms yep, of... Yep, yep. Yeah, okay. And uh, now, so looking at the titles, we've got things about DJ Khaled and the Infinity War parody reactions, and then more about Drake and behind the scenes of Justin Timberlake. So I think there's a disconnect here between potentially the channel banner and the content. And you know I, what? You're just doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Either become a vlog yeah. or focus. Um, you, you're doing a good job showing yourself in the thumbnails. It's actually kind of like a Inception, though, because you have like a small <laughs> version of yourself. <laughs> and it's exactly the same picture, isn't it? <laughs> and another version of yourself. Um, it's kind of weird. I like it, but it's kind of weird. Um, so you're playing around, you're doing awesome. Your use of emojis is great. Mm -hmm. You can never, ever over emoji, right? <laughs> I don't think it's possible. Um, find a focus and go for it, man. You got this. You're doing well. You got over 100 subs. Congratulations to that. Find your thing. Right now you're floating around and you're becoming a creator and that's all part of the journey and that's great. But when you find your focus and you're able to double down on that yeah. and the success you find, you're going to rock. Yeah. I was just looking at uh, trying to read the video um, channel description as well to see if the creator has an idea of focus, but it doesn't really look like it at the moment. It's I'm, I'm sorry to hear that your channel got hacked uh, um, previously. Um, but yeah, so finding the focus for you there, Kate, Mr. KT, uh, could be the route to future success. The next channel we are going to look at is Spicy Mafia Official. Jeremy and I were just uh, having a quick look at this channel before we went live to try and work out why this channel has got so many views so quickly. The channel is only three weeks old and it has hundreds of thousands of views, but they haven't shared the subscriber count with us. Um, but I think it's because of your association, whatever that may be, with Queen. I do apologize if I pronounce the name wrong here again. I'm not up with uh, music in any way, shape or form. Queen and Nadia, N Nadia uh, who I quickly checked on uh, Instagram, has like 4 million followers. Uh, so it's awesome here that you are able to sort of branch out into your own story and yeah, lots of views already. But I think there's some good things going on here. Like we, Jeremy, we've just been talking about emojis and a very simple use of emojis to tell part of a story within the thumbnail uh, in, in here. Is there anything we can add really? The channel's just very young, but it's already doing very well. Like we look at the view counts, there's some with 200,000 views, like this one about pregnancy, got a lot of views, and then another one with 12,000 views. So a big uh, discrepancy between view counts. I think maybe is there some focus there, a storytelling, is it a vlog? What would, yeah, what would you I think, I think that, you know, there's two things that happen when you know someone famous on YouTube and you get to hang out with that person on YouTube. There's a few things to to not be able to lose the opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would do is I would make sure that the famous person is part of your art 
for to begin with. Mm -hmm. And like, so I would actually put her in the banner as well. Um, the second thing I would do is like, you've done very well is put her in the titles for now and tags yeah. and descriptions and playlists. And then, you know, the opposite of that is immediately also make it about you as well. So make sure you start, people start understanding who you are. Um, so, you know, just make sure it's all about you, but use the flavor of the other famous person to get you, you know, to get people to subscribe to you. So the question you have to ask yourself is, okay, they like her. She has 3 million subs or whatever she has. Why would those types of people be interested in me? And if you can answer that question in a video and titles, tags, and descriptions and thumbnails, and then your banner, then you can use, we call this fame hacking. You can use her fame to get people to be part of your life as well and yep. your journey. Yep. One of the best ways to do this is to share your videos in her channel tab, um, in her um, community tab. Yes. So uh, let's let's quickly try and look into that. So um, if we go to, uh, let's see if we can find their channel. I Again, apologies, folks, if you've seen some terrible spelling here. So we, we believe that it's this channel, um, this person that you are associated with. So if you can have your, I believe that's you there on the left-hand side. I may be wrong, but that, um, if you can get your uh, partner to share some of uh, your videos in the community tab, it's reaching th potentially three million more viewers. Um, so absolutely, Jeremy, awesome suggestion there. I don't think your channel has the community tab just yet. I was quickly looking let's go back uh it looks as if you don't have a community tab yet but um yeah absolutely and i love that term fame hacking <laughs> associate trying to uh, how how would you define fame hacking jeremy just if we're touching on that point very quickly i mean basically if you know someone that's famous um or you can associate yourself with that person in some way yeah then you know for example I experimented with some series for some brands with like, you know, big fortune 100 companies where, you know, they would hire someone like Katy Perry. Yeah. Right. So we would use the fame of a Katy Perry of the world to then associate Katy Perry with X brand. Yeah. But it's not just about being a groupie, is it? You need to have, there needs to be some value within that fame hacking as well. You can't just. Yeah, you, you have to bring, you have to have it. your own soul. Yeah, like, exactly. So you have to bring your own vibe to a situation. But at the same time, you've heard the term guilty by association. If you're part of someone's life with 3 million subscribers, you may be interesting as well. You know, Casey Neistat and um, Peter McKinnon have brought on some baby YouTubers to their channel. Yeah. And overnight, some of these guys have 100,000 subs now. Yeah. So if we were to try a bit of our own fame hacking, we could say, uh, hey, we've just audited your channel, Spice Mafia. We'd love it if you want to share this uh, on your partner's channel in the community tab. Like, Look at the suggestions we can offer to improve uh, everybody's channels. <laughs> it's kind of a, a bit of a desperate uh, fame hacking plea there and taking back everything Jeremy said to just to try and get on a free <laughs> million sub channel. Uh, we're, we're joking there a little bit, but I did see you in the chat, uh, Spicy Mafia, so it's uh, good to see that you were able to hang on there and get a few tips from uh, Jeremy the Expert there on channel audits. Okay, uh, we are going to take a, another question uh, now of the week. So again, if I can just get my clicks uh correct here and we can bring while, you, while you're doing that i'm yeah. gonna answer a question from go dr. for Stein. it go for it um doctor he asks how do you make yourself knowledge known without bragging you bring value so for example let's say i am good at thumbnails and i'm able to teach people how to do good thumbnails what if i had a video that's learn how to make thumbnails like pewdiepie and then I just literally showed people how to make thumbnails just like PewDiePie. And then I got PewDiePie to tweet that video and share it on his community tab because I'm just like celebrating him. So it's about him, not about me, but I'm just celebrating his awesome thumbnails and telling people how to do it like him. So that would be an example of how it's not about me. It's about someone else, but I'm bringing value to others. 
Awesome. So Jeremy there, keeping an eye on the chat and uh, uh, helping you uh, with your creative journeys. Uh, we, As I say, we love to have... Um, oh, no, we've already had that question. So um, I put in the wrong question there. So let's take some questions uh, from the chat. I've, uh, it should have been about uh, categories, but um, unfortunately, it's a chat from last week. So if there's any more questions, you've got five minutes here. Fire away uh, before we do a couple more channel reviews. Uh, so Jeremy, if there's any more uh, you pick up there... Just the long guy. Hey, make sure that you submit your channel and the review yeah. and we'll definitely check you out. Thanks for the super chat. We Fa appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, the reason we don't sort of review super chats all the time is because uh, they just go so quickly and disappear off my screen. I, I, I can't always check them in the, um, in the live stream. Uh, but uh, so I'm going to try and bring up some more channels here. See what we can bring up here very quickly. Any any uh, good questions coming in there, Jeremy, on the chat as we... One question is, how do I make a video go viral? And my answer might shock you, but my answer is don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and let me explain why. So you have ebb and flows of you being a YouTuber. And, you know, actually the vidIQ channel is a very good example. We're about to cross 200,000 subscribers. Thanks whoop, to, whoop. to Rob's amazing, you know... I don't know if it's his bald head or what, but people apparently like this guy. Something works. But if we had viral sensations that are happening per periodically, like boom, viral, 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 um, believe it or not, it's a lot better to have 100 videos with 10,000 views than one video with a million views. They're both a million views, but one's predictable and one's not. When you have these spikes and these peaks and valleys that are very harsh, sometimes YouTube doesn't actually know what to do with your content. Now, don't get me wrong, going viral is a phenomenal thing. You want to do that. But my, my, what I'm trying to illustrate to you is have a plan, an evergreen content plan where 80% of the time, you know you're gonna get a thousand views today. And then that 10 or 20% of the time, try to go viral. One of my former employees is named Joe Scott, Answers with Joe. In February of this year, Joe had 100,000 subs. He's about to hit 300,000 subscribers since February. And the reason for that is he gives consistent value 80% of the time, just getting 10, 20, 30,000 views with viral videos that I have also hit and then boom explosion so don't try to go viral try to get consistent and then have viral moments i know that sounds silly but yeah. it's a perception thing yeah i think uh, just to add to jeremy's concepts of viral moments um probably what one of the most successful ways with a strategy and we did a video on this recently is like how to make a, a viral video on fortnite was really follow the trends of what's happening and be there first and fast as possible so that you can just creep into the, the, the search rankings while everybody's trying to find out what it is. It was Fortnite for Android and there's a couple of channels with hundreds of subscribers, thousands of subscribers, and they jumped on that information that everybody wanted right now and they were just able to, to creep in there and just get a... It wasn't like millions of views. It was sometimes tens of thousands of views or 100,000 views, but that's, that's your viral moment, as Jeremy says like maybe dedicate 10 to 20 percent of your efforts to that but building an audience over time is certainly the way to go okay jeremy are you ready for uh, some more channel audits and we're going to do this slightly differently we're going to try and do some quick fire channel audits where i'm going to put a two minute time limit on the on the clock uh, so we try and go Let's through these as quickly as, and as efficiently as possible. So if you can see, see my shared screen now, is that yep. on there? Okay, awesome. And I'm just going to put an actual timer on screen for everybody to see uh, as we count down. If I just remember the right one. Okay, so we've got two minutes and we're looking at Colin Plays Pianos. Uh, this channel has 220 subscribers. And it looks to be a channel that's dedicated really focused and niche, dedicated on playing tracks from Minecraft. So it looks like a, a, a brilliant idea. Uh, anything we can add there, Jeremy, in terms of how you can sell this better to the audience? Yeah, first, you know, put yourself on the banner and thumbnails maybe, um, maybe not. Yeah. Um, that may actually help. Another thing is I don't think the the order of, of keywords in your titles are necessarily correct. I'm I'm guessing if you typed in Minecraft music. Okay, let's try that. Or is Minecraft songs? 
Minecraft music or Minecraft songs. Um, or maybe even Minecraft soundtrack. cover versions. What would it be? Minecraft cover of songs. Cover songs. Yeah, so there's cover and piano. So there's potential, um, if I can spell piano. Minecraft piano cover. Yeah. There we are. So there's uh, quite a few options here. Just do Minecraft cover piano. Play so around with the keyword a bit. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you did this for all of your titles, the first part of your titles and then the name of the song second, you may actually you know, develop the series concept and rank a lot more for this term every week. Yep. Awesome. Okay, we've got 30 seconds left. Anything more we can add to uh, to the Minecraft uh, piano covers? Uh, the, new, the new thumbnails are great, but make yep. them colored or do something different. Okay. Yeah, but sometimes there's maybe a bit too much brown in the background. Um, I mean, would it be worth having a Minecraft built piano as your source rather than the, the, the picture? Yeah, I think like making it feel like Minecraft, yeah. like with the colors and everything will make more sense. All right. So that was Colin Plays. Uh, good luck with your channel. We've just done two minutes there and we're going to move on to the next of channel, which is the Curl Family uh, vlog here. I think it's the first vlogging channel we've looked at. Uh, new videos every Monday and Thursday. Channel with two and a half thousand subscribers. So congratulations on starting to have an influence in the... Um, in the family vlogging world, which is very, very difficult. But what I'm looking at here immediately, what I can see just from the vidIQ tools is that we've got some high disliked videos here. So maybe this is controversial content, um, but the thumbnails are very bright. They certainly have a, a distinct pattern and theme. How would we maybe address the, 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 the dislikes on these videos and uh, Jeremy? Well, I mean, clearly with some of these titles, you're going for that yeah. polarization. Yeah. Um, but then you do like slime holes after, you know, pedophile videos. Right. So clearly there's, by the way, I love your thumbnails and keep on doing what you do. I don't care if you polarize or if you're trying to, you know, to what, whatever you're trying to do, you do you. I'm not, we're not judging you here, but what we are saying is we almost never see channels with dislikes this high yeah. unless you're Rebecca Black and, and you sing <laughs> Friday songs. Um, so there's clearly, you're clearly seem to be poking a nerve with yeah. a lot of people, good or bad. It doesn't matter. We're not here to judge, but there is some polarization happening. So the question you really need to ask yourself is can you do a slime video? when you also talk about pedophiles, that's really where even with a vlog family channel, that's a big disconnect for me. Yeah, so um, it's potentially completely different audiences watching one video, subscribing, and then the next one is, well, that's, I do not want to, I'm not interested in that. Um, and if even if I am, I'm not going to enjoy this video. So yeah. And, and if you really are a family vlog, I would use the word family vlog in your titles for yeah. the first couple of years because a lot of people don't do that. And, you know, if people are looking for a new family vlog, then maybe they can find you. Another thing I would do is I would really, I would, I, if it was a polarization style channel, I wouldn't be a family vlog. Okay. Okay. Time is up there for the curl family vlogs. Next channel we're looking at, uh, looks to be a very new channel. This is Andreas, uh, Cantu. Doesn't look to be many videos here yet. It feels as if maybe you've, you're wanting some review on your channel, but you haven't really built your channel out yet. I will say I that you- I love the banner. I love the banner. Now, if you, you love a banner, but does it need maybe a value proposition on, on it of some kind? Uh, like, why is he looking out onto this um, very uh, scenic view? Is there a purpose behind it, perhaps? Yeah, if, if we knew what the what and why the channel yeah. existed, yeah. like outdoors, rock your life or something, you know, then, exactly, then yeah. we would have a context of if, what is the channel about and do I belong here yeah. to subscribe? So obviously we need context there, but I will say if there was a, a value proposition statement, I think this is the best banner of the day. Yeah. Uh, because... 
what a lot of people don't realize is just photography and you being you is more powerful than art in a lot of cases. If you look at like Peter McKinnon's banner, it's just him looking out the windows, but he's, it's just art. It's just beautiful. It's a, it's a phenomenal photo. This is a phenomenal photo. Don't underestimate the power of taking great pictures. Um, but you need context. You need to tell your story. Uh, but I, I do think that uh, even with the value proposition missing, this is a great banner. Yeah. Uh, so things maybe to build out on your channel playlists. Um, we don't. We uh, again, as Jeremy says about the what and the why. Maybe include an about section about your what your channel is. And I mean, and you've consistency wise, it's like, are you are you here for the long run, or are you just posting videos whenever you feel like it? A, day, a video two days ago, two weeks ago, three months ago, maybe start the youtube journey in terms of consistency maybe there that's andres Cantu. the next channel we have and we put two minutes on the clock is kukudus toys i think a channel with 77 subscribers no channel banner from what i can tell here uh so again relatively new channel a month old welcome to youtube as always and let's see it looks as if it might be a, a ryan uh, what's it? ryan's toy reviews type channel um looking at what transformers and red vehicles it looks like here but already i'm seeing a, a, a small audience he, building here with views into the double figures perfect light ratio everybody's loving your videos which is good to see yeah look at that 21 likes on a 50 view video that's high engagement i think we're probably going to save the usual things here jeremy out in terms of banner maybe build out the thumbnails seems to be a focus on what the why what what the channel's about anything else to add yeah just uh study really study the this is one of the more difficult spaces to get into yep. for a lot of reasons primary colors all the thumbnails should have extremely bright backgrounds um the thumbnails are good i would just cut out all of the elements like the person and the toys yep. and just make extremely bright backgrounds Beyond that, uh, just really understand what the intent of search is. So, for example, um, you know, if you download the Kids app, the YouTube Kids app, and see what the top 10 or 20 videos are, you'll really get a sense of what is performing the best right now. And that is Kukudus Toys. And we've done that with 20 seconds to spare there on the timer. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings to an end today's uh, live stream channel audits. I feel as if we've gone through so many channels there and covered so much, Jeremy, in the space of an hour. It's pretty... Uh, I, I always try and get try and make this a more relaxed experience and then once we get into it it's like whew, that was hard work but i think we've <laughs> we've done a lot of we've given a lot of help to a lot of youtubers there and i would also say that the uh, the form now there's like 70 people who've submitted their videos for review so it's awesome that you're all interacting uh, and uh, looking to get help there and i unfortunately i do apologize if we didn't have time to review your channel today but that's why we've got that list now so that if you Join us next week and we see you in the live chat. We'll be definitely looking at your channel next week. Any final thoughts, Jeremy? Um, nope. I have no <laughs> thoughts today. I caught him off guard there. He's, he's thinking about a big conference that he's doing next week, which also reminds me uh, we are not here next week, unfortunately. Uh, Jeremy has his big conference, which uh, I'm going to as well. Jeremy, why, why don't you just uh, tell us a little bit about your conference that's going on next week? Really looking forward yeah, to getting so if there. Yeah, if you want to check it out, uh, a lot of people were talking about Nick Nimmin in the comments. He'll be at my conference next week. He's awesome. Uh, if you go to VidPow, V-I-D-P-O-W, Dot com. I am hosting Video Marketing World. We're going to have 500 attendees and Daryl Leaves, Tim Schmoyer, Roberto Blake, Nick Nimmin, Rob Wilson. The debut of Rob Wilson. And I'm terrified. I mean, like, I'm talking to hundreds of people here on a live stream now, but when we get them all in the same room, it's going to be an interesting one. I'm not going to lie, Jeremy. I hope I don't bring the whole tone of the conference down through my, my uh, <laughs> talk, whatever it's about. If everyone's just crying when they leave the room, <laughs> we know you did bad.
<laughs> Thank you very much. There. Awesome feedback there from Jeremy. Yeah, it's like uh, I, I look to Jeremy's help uh, in this live stream, but he'll definitely be looking to my help next week. All right. Thank you, everybody. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want more channel audits and awesome vid IQ content just like this every single week, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to point at my... Uh, uh, subscription pillar there. We are very close to 200,000 subscribers, which we're looking forward to celebrating. In the meantime, as always, enjoy the rest of your video making day and we will see you in two weeks. Bye for now.